Welcome back everyone to Grand Tactician the Civil War. Well, it's February 27th of 1862 and we are diving right in to another battle. Uh, this time it's going to be uh, another battle here in southwestern Kentucky between the Union Department of the West and my Army of the Tennessee who just came off their very first battle in the last episode. And now we're going to get right back to it with the Battle of Hopkinsville, Kentucky. We'll see what these boys can do now that they've got a little bit of experience. Okay, so this is a defensive battle, so we are going to have a little bit of an advantage. The objective, there's two of them, and they are both here behind me, so we would expect that he'll come right in through the town. I'm going to throw at least one brigade up on the left. I still don't have any cavalry in this army. I did set it up to recruit some, but we're just not there yet. So I would love to be able to just send some cav up here to guard these two crossings uh, and then put the majority of my army right here to guard these ones. But it doesn't look like that's an option. So we're going to have to compromise a little bit here. Okay, well, we're still getting into position when we hit the end of the day. So uh, now's a chance to redeploy. I'm going to go ahead and Stretch Walker into a single line here. And we're going to start to dig him in right here at the edge of these two crossings. This spot here is kind of interesting. Just because we've got water behind us here too. Uh, I think what I want to do here is I actually want to go ahead and move Longstreet's division. Which is still getting into position. Up here. Now Longstreet's division has... Uh, it's unusual in that it has two units of artillery and two of infantry. I don't know why they're facing that way and why they're stuck and now I can't move them, but there we go. So we're going to put Longstreet's boys... Oh boy, that's weird that that's happening. Right up here to guard this bridge. All right, so we're guarding all the crossings, and we're going to assume that this is where he's going to come through because all the objectives are on the other side. I don't have much in the way of reserve, but I think we'll be okay. Yeah, I want to get these guys moved to right here. Okay, I think we're pretty good. We'll see. Okay, we've got our first glimpse of the enemy who appears to be coming down this road here. So he's coming down from here, and he's going to probably hit us on this side, which is fine. I was kind of hoping he'd come down this way, but that's okay. Well, we're going to sit tight. We're not going to do anything. Uh, if he does indeed engage on this side and doesn't make a push down here towards, say, the brickworks and the mill, then we might go ahead and cross and try to come up here and cover this spot. But for now, we're going to sit tight. We're going to let our artillery do its work. Tillman's got 10 pounders here. We've got 12 pound Napoleons here under Imboden. And it'll probably be a while before we actually see any real engagement by his forces. Morale's significantly higher among the Federals than it is for me. Probably because we're in Kentucky. So we're a little higher out of our area and more into his. Is he actually attacking? He looks like he's ready to make an attempt at crossing down here. Need to get these guys up a little closer. Okay. We're engaged. Davis Mountaineers. About 1,700 men. With Sharps rifles. And then the Houston Hounds right here with 1,800, almost 1,900 men. Oh! Bump the mouse. We should rack up casualties on him pretty fast here. He's actually not even firing on the Houston Hounds. Actually, he's not... Did he not hit us? Oh, he's firing on Davis Mountaineers, that's what. Ragged Old First actually has range on him, at least half the brigade does. So we've got 
two and a half brigades firing on one plus artillery. I like those odds. Yeah, he's gonna load up on this one crossing, it looks like. I think I'm gonna bring the second Texas battery up a little closer. Alright, now he's gonna load up and try to cross. Is he making any attempt to come down this way? It doesn't look like he is. So I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna let St. Patrick's own come up here as a reserve to this side, since they're in reserve on the right. Just in case nice to have an extra brigade here in case one of these other ones breaks. I'm a little concerned about whiting. The Davis Mountaineers, they might, might get beat up on before long. But so far so good. About three to one casualties. I'm going to start driving that morale number down. Battery can be a little more effective from over here. That's right. Drop back. All right, we're gonna hold hold these guys right here. I'm just gonna keep them kind of in between as a reserve. Since he's pulling back, he may be shifting over this way. Oh, here comes Sweeney. He's reformed and he's going to try and make another go of it. At some point, I may pull the Davis Mountaineers out and shift everybody over. I just don't want them. Yeah, they're down to 26 rounds. They've got those Sharps rifles, so they fire fast. They run out of ammo fast. Oh, he, he's definitely going to try and cross. Okay. Let's shift Shadow Troopers over here. Shift the 23rd Oklahoma Infantry into their spot. Because he's, he's throwing three brigades across the river now. Whiting was wounded. Yeah, this is going to get ugly. Davis Mountaineers taking heavy casualties. They've lost their CO. Definitely need to get some help over there before they fall back. But boy, they're doing a great job. They're just going to run out of ammo. I'm just concerned about disengaging them when we're in the middle of a fight. I need to get the Shadow Troopers over here first. guys are glitching out on me here. Alright, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull these guys back. Shift the Houston Hounds over. Put the Shadow Troopers in their spot. Down to 10 rounds. 
Although shifting both brigades at the same time might not have been the best idea. Because now I have nobody firing on the crossing troops. Come on, Davis Mountaineers, get out of there. Where's he going? He can't cross over there, can he? What? That did not look like a place he could cross. Okay, there we go. Now the Shadow Troopers under Anderson and the Houston Hounds under Wharton are going to be doing all this. I, I haven't even been paying attention to what may be going on behind him. It does not look like he's making an attempt to go anywhere else. So let's go ahead and bring Cox Division right up here. Start getting on this flank. Although I'm going to put the Battle River Rebels back a little bit. I don't want them up on the front lines like that. Yeah, somehow he got that brigade over there. I don't know how. This whole fight's going to happen on my left, it looks like. His morale's still a little higher than mine. But he's just going to load everybody up trying to cross in that one spot. So then let's go ahead and bring... Ah, uh, you know what? I'm going to bring Claiborne up over here. And we'll just let that one division cross right there. This whole battle's really been about one division on my part. I have a feeling before we get Cox Division up here, this battle is going to be over. He's somehow getting people across over there. So here's what I'm going to do. Because he's got, oh, he's got multiple brigades over there. It looks like he actually crossed some up here. So we need Claiborne's division to move up into that spot. I'm going to keep these guys back. Dang, these guns are already up here. Battle River Rebels. How are we doing here, boys? We're still getting caught down there. Claiborne's on his way. Only 600 casualties for him. All right, Kentucky colonels, I want you right there. Sixteen guns. We got to deal with them. How are we doing here, Houston Hounds? Down to twenty-four rounds. Man, the fire is so hot in this spot here. All right, St. Patrick's own coming into contact. He's pulling his guns back now. No, 
how we're doing here. Pretty good. I tell you what, man. I mean, for the casualties that these Union units are taking and trying to cross here, they are not breaking easily. But they're about to have a major problem on their hands. As soon as Buford gets the order for long range, I'm going to send him up. And we're just going to devastate these guys. Okay, here we go. Say hello to my little friends from Kentucky. Alright, beautiful. Tear them up. Why would you ever try to cross there? With what I have lined up. Kind of a Fredericksburg situation there. Let's get Avery up here. Yeah, your attack's gonna fall apart now. And now he's engaging me up here on the left, finally. St. Patrick's own. Wow, they've taken 339 casualties already. That happened fast. Francis Marion Brigade, let's get them over here. And Shut down this battery before it becomes a problem. Warden's low on ammunition. Alright, Ramsier, hit him. They got that battery while wow, they're still moving. Bye-bye. And we've just destroyed that attack now. That'll do it. Let's see if we can't wreak some havoc before he pulls everybody out. nothing else caused some more casualties pretty one-sided but it's about what you would expect given the nature of that fight with him trying to cross multiple brigades in front of a strong defensive position and then with men getting run down in a route I've, I've caused at least another thousand casualties since he gave the order to retreat
St. Patrick's own got got their butts kicked though. They did well, but boy, they took a lot of casualties. That's uh that's a third of my casualties in that one brigade. All right, 8,000 men lost. Battle Hopkinsville. These are all minor victories though, just because it's they're not big enough in terms of the men engaged or the casualties inflicted for them to be considered major victories. All right, the best part, we captured 3,700 rifles and eight guns from the battlefield. That'll be helpful moving forward. Uh, so here's the situation. Men fielded pretty much even at the moment. Morale of the armies on his side is down to 85, but uh, national morale is the number that matters, and his is still at 70. So we've got a long way to go to do anything about that. But we have now, uh, in turn, defeated both of these federal armies uh, in and around Hopkinsville. We should be about to take Cairo. Slow winter movement. We're about to hit the spring campaigning season, though. But the Missouri State Guard's about to cross over and take Cairo. How's Sweet's army doing? They're supposed to be coming up here. They are uh, moving up to Corinth. Where's the situation here? I think I was sending, yeah, I was sending the army of Georgia up here. And then once they get close, we'll send the army of the Appalachians down to join them. Second Corps under Jackson. Conveniently in the Shenandoah Valley, right where we would like them to be. What are we getting? We're not getting nearly enough supply. Got to upgrade that depot, and we really need to capture this one here. Third Corps is on its way over there, too. Leaving just the First Corps, 26,000 men under Johnston up here. But really, other than the Army of the Chesapeake, 31,000 strong, he doesn't have any armies in the area. Okay, it's March 3rd, 1862, and the Missouri State Guard has reached their destination, so they are in the process of taking care of. Uh, we've got some food issues here, uh, so some serious attrition. 5,000 uh, disabled soldiers, either wounded or sick. Uh, you can see the numbers there, 2,700 wounded, 2,200 currently sick. Uh, we're building up both of these supply depots, and we're going to sit tight for a little while in winter quarters there. Uh, while we wait and see what he does. The eventual goal, of course, is to take Louisville and get Kentucky to secede. It's slow going, waiting for Breckenridge to get up here. Uh, and supply is going to certainly be a concern because there really aren't a lot of supply depots up here. But we could take the Saltville Salt Works. Now, this was historically, this is not something you hear about in most of the Civil War history books. But uh, being that most of my family is from this part of Kentucky right here and served in units in eastern Kentucky, a lot of them were involved um, on the raid on Saltville. There were multiple raids on Saltville. That salt works was a, a crucial um, salt depot for the Confederacy. Salt was important uh, to the Army, especially for, for preserving food and things of that nature. And uh, so the Saltville Salt Works in southwestern Virginia was a big target for the Union Army. And in fact, one of the very few examples of uh, an execution for war crimes after the war came as a result of Saltville. Because there were some black troops that were in that Saltville raid with the Kentucky boys that attacked there. Um, and they were left behind after the battle, after the Union retreated from Saltville. And a Confederate... Uh, officer came in with some men to the uh, I think it was a university where th that had been turned into a hospital and started just summarily executing the black troops that, that had been wounded and left behind and uh, that officer eventually was tried after the war and, and executed on war crimes battle of the Tennessee River All right, so the Union just selected diplomacy one uh, let's take a look at what happened here uh, Stuart's squadron retreated. The engagement was a remarkable strategic victory with the enemy fleet steaming to the safety of their harbors. So it doesn't look like any ships were lost. But he did attempt uh, to hit us there. We now have Cairo, Illinois. So French invasion in Mexico. We'd love for those troops to come up and help us out. We're going to need a supply depot in Cairo. Because we definitely are we're down in bad need of supplies here. All 
All right, March 13th, 1862, Fugitive Slave Act annulled. Army officers to not re uh, not to return slaves, the most hated legislation in the U.S. Uproar in the South, abolitionists cheering. This was something that happened historically uh, where they stopped enforcing the Fugitive Slave Act, which was a very controversial thing in the North. Uh, and it really kind of flies in the face of the argument that the Civil War was about states' rights for the South because they did not want the states in the North to have the right to not have to return slaves. So it was states' rights when it was convenient. I'm in the process of getting those last few um, patron units re uh, recruited and into the armies. And uh, I may go ahead, what I might do is once I've got them all recruited, uh, maybe as a separate video, just so we don't have to take up time during uh, these episodes, I might just upload a separate video and post it to Patreon for you guys, where I just go over all of the armies and show you exactly where every single division, every single brigade is, so you know exactly what uh, corps, what army, what division your units are in, uh, so that you know when they go into battle where your men are. Okay, and we're going to move the Western Army under McCulloch toward the Springfield Depot in southwestern Missouri. It's a three-star depot, which would be uh, real important for us to be able to launch further operations uh, in Missouri with the eventual goal of working our way up toward St. Louis. Uh, but in the meantime, we've got to deal with the Army of Indiana, which is 30,000 strong and is there. Uh, we completed the impressment policy, which is going to increase the number of people that we can recruit. Uh, but I think we're going to be good for recruits for now. So I want to start focusing on some other things. Uh, finances haven't been looking real good lately. So we're going to go ahead and print some more notes. That'll take 27 days. Situation staying pretty even in terms of the men fielded, so that's good news. As long as we can keep equal with him or close to it, we'll be okay. All right, our Western Army has made contact with the Army of Indiana. This is an important battle for us because uh, we need to make our presence felt in southwestern Missouri. We need to win this battle so we can get up and grab that level 3 supply depot. That's going to allow for all future engagements that are going to take place uh, in the Trans-Mississippi Theater. So uh, we're going to be outnumbered, but not by a lot. Nothing we can't handle, I don't think. Battle for Springfield. Okay, so this one's going to be a race for the center. Uh, he's coming in from the northeast corner. This is the Wilson's Creek Battlefield. Uh, and we're going to be coming in from the southwest. And the objectives are a little closer to him than they are to me, but that's okay. I do not have a lot of cavalry. I have one unit of cavalry here, Rangers Volunteers. And we're going to try to get them across and get up here if we possibly can. Try to take Manly Hill. And then we'll go from there. Okay, he just got to the objective on the wire road. Uh, so we're going to get into position... I'm still waiting. For some reason, Rangers Volunteers got backed up behind all the other units. So they are not going to get uh, to Manly Hill as quickly as I would like them to. But what I am going to do now is I'm going to get into position. I'm going to send the Yuma Mounted Rangers or Mounted Raiders up here to this crossing just in case. Though I expect he's going to come down this way uh, toward the other objective. But we're definitely, there they go. So we are going to get our cav there in time. Okay, so we hit the end of the day, so we got to redeploy. So I've got uh, Theophilus Holmes' uh, division over here, and they're going to hold the objective, which is where I would expect that he'll attack. But there's no road that goes down here. So it's possible that he may end up coming down this way. I'm just not entirely sure what he's going to do, but I've got my two cavalry brigades out here on the left flank and get them dismounted and just covering that crossing. I've got DH Hill's division kind of just holding the middle so they can reinforce either side if it comes to it. And then Hood's division, the Western Legion, uh, is here. Santa Fe Irregulars, Tucson Rangers, El Paso Heavy Artillery. We've got another unit that's coming for that um, division, but they have not yet arrived, but they are recruited. 
All right, we're getting some sighting of him, and it does appear that he's heading straight for the objective. So if that's the case, then we need to be countering that move. Uh, I'm going to start by sending my cab across to maybe get his attention and divert some of those troops this way. Although it looks like he is coming down the road with at least one brigade. But the majority of them are definitely going for the objective. So, uh, oh, now he's going that way too. So let's go ahead and shift hood. We're going to go down this way. And then once they do that, then we'll bring them up here to support the division that's already there. So it looks like he had built some parapets up here intending to defend the wire road which is pretty interesting and pretty cool actually that he was thinking that way uh, but now he appears to be getting aggressive and wanting to go for the objective that i hold rangers volunteers are gonna uh, engage up here and disrupt those plans i think i'm gonna go ahead and just send hood's division straight in now that we've done that do the same with dh hill let's bring dh hill no, not, not like that. Let's bring DHL up here, and then eventually we'll advance to help out with the, the cavalry. Okay, so it looks like we've completely screwed up his plans, because uh, we caught him in the middle of advancing on this other objective. And so instead of either holding his defensive position uh, on wire road and, and forcing it into either me attacking or a stalemate, he decided to advance out of that position, and I caught him in the middle of the field trying to do so. And so now he's trying to figure out what to do, and I don't know that he knows what to do. But we're going to go ahead and advance everybody. We're, we're just going to take advantage of this confusion as best we can. I should have ordered these guys not to use the road because now they're getting all messed up. Santa Fe regulars are about to hit Iron Discipline 2. So that's pretty awesome. They may end up being our first elite unit if they can hit level 3. I need the Tucson Rangers to move up a little bit so they can get in range. You can see his men are exhausted because they were climbing those hills and they were marching around. And we got a bunch of feud situations going on too. I gotta find a place where I can get these guns to fire because these woods are not conducive for artillery. Gotta get these cav weapons upgraded too. Cav are going to get too involved here. All right, Theophilus Holmes is getting into position now. And then it's just going to be a shootout. You can see the morale situation still heavily favors the Federal Army. And that's been the case in these battles where we're fighting on what is Union soil. Get these three inch guns up here so they can start firing. The Arkansas State Troops have Springfield muskets and therefore have no ability to fire from this distance. What are the Tucson Rangers doing? They're facing the wrong way and they're getting because of it. Stop falling back. They're falling back too. What is going on? I didn't give an order to fall back. Hood, what are you doing? I 
Oh, that's frustrating. I gave no order to fall back. Sure is messing things up, though. And then that leaves the 42nd Black Watch in a difficult situation by themselves, and they're taking a ton of casualties because of it. Get back up there, Bonham. Why did he fall back? Ugh. push the Willamette guard up. I'm going to bring up this cab too. We've got to get some more pressure on his right flank. 42nd Black Watch just fell back. They were stuck out there all by themselves. They didn't have a choice. Bobcat Brigade, we got to get them upgraded. They've still got uh, reboard muskets. All right, here we go. Come on, Tucson Rangers. Santa Fe regulars are not firing, and I do not understand why. This will help a lot, getting the Willamette Guard down here to fire on the 2nd Brigade. Not going as well as I'd hoped. What are these guys? They're charging right in here. They've lost a thousand men in here. Charging right in. All right, Yuma Mounted Raiders, Samuel Cooper, get in there and hit these guys. They've lost a thousand men. We can break them. on this thing. Holmes is demoralized. Ugh, that whole brigade, that whole division. Jeez. They broke in a hurry. What is going on over there? Is there, are there guns in there? there? Oh, there's two batteries right here. And they're just lighting up everybody. That's the problem. I've got a battery in here too, but they don't seem to be having the impact. Our morale is just brutal. I mean, we've taken half the casualties that he has. Let's, we can force these guys to surrender. Although the mounted raiders, they're disrupted and exhausted. But look at this guy. He's down. He's lost 2,000 men. He's down to 700. They, they should surrender. If we press things a little bit. Another unit falling back. What is going on? Willamette Guard forward. Get in there and try to disrupt these batteries. I thought we had a great situation where we caught him napping in the middle of the field, but his his batteries just did a number on me, I guess. These guys are oh right, now they're firing. We gotta try and disrupt these batteries. percent casualties now this could be a battle where we we turn it into a major victory if we can inflict more than 30 percent casualties on the enemy which is quite possible I'm 
No, I don't think we want to go that far. Let's sit tight right where we are. We're going to take a lot of casualties for Bobcat Brigade is, but it's kind of necessary. I don't see that unit. Did we cause them to surrender and I just missed it? Nope. I don't know where he went. Okay, we're starting to see some progress now. We've stabilized our line, even though two-thirds of Holmes's division retreated. The Bobcat Brigade is holding strong. Good for them. I think we've got this. Here we go again with the fallen back. I didn't give that order. Ah. Uh, serious command issues in this army right now. I guess I got to look at our commanding officer because it seems like everybody's wanting to disobey him right now. So there must be an issue there. But we'll find a way to win anyway. All right, so it looks like once again, Holmes is pulling back without orders. Because I had these guys up there disrupting that artillery battery, and he just started pulling his other brigade back. The good news is that his other brigades have recovered. But the main battle line now appears to be right here. Looks like we got Edward O.C. Ord right here. 332 men he's lost so far. We need to move the Willamette Guard up so we can get them firing. There we go. Now we've got two brigades firing on Ord. I really need to nail this battery though. He's still giving me fits down here. So I'm going to mount up the Rangers Volunteers send them in. They're probably going to get driven off, but hopefully not before they disrupt that battery. Come on, boys. Good job. They did their jobs. They took out that battery. Push Bonham up. Nicely done, boys. I think that's pretty much going to seal it. Once Ord falls back, and it looks like he finally is now. All right, that's a huge victory for us in southwest Missouri. That is going to open the door for a drive on St. Louis, maybe as soon as the next episode. This will give us a base of supply from which to launch that attack. All right, we hit the end of the day and it ended the battle right there. So uh, 7,500 casualties for the Union, 3,000 for us. Most importantly, that opens the door to Southwest Missouri. Uh, that is a, uh, it shows as a minor victory, but on the strategic scale, it's a major one for us. Uh, so we'll take a look at the situation now as we move in uh, to the spring of 1862, and then we'll wrap this episode up. Okay, so with the defeat of the Army of Indiana, we're going to move uh, into a base of supply right here at the Springfield Depot uh, with an eye toward this road that runs up to St. Louis. And right here, these two supply depots. We're going to have to capture those and those are going to be what allow us to launch the final attack on St. Louis. I'm also going to send uh, my navies, my Brownwater navies up there to help with that when the time comes. And I may even go ahead 
and send the Missouri State Guard up that direction once they've got a base of supply built. He's got another army he's creating here uh, that's going to have to be dealt with by the Army of Tennessee. And then, of course, here's the situation here. We're going to converge the Army of Georgia uh, and the Army of the Appalachians on the Army of Tennessee once we've got supply here for the Army of Georgia, which we don't have right now. Uh, that's the current situation. We're in a good position, I think, moving forward. And I will do a separate video uh, for all of our patrons where I go over every single brigade and every single one of our armies so you know exactly where your unit is now that we've got them all recruited. And then we'll see you all back here in a couple of days with the next episode. Thanks for watching.